Lady Honoria Maitland strolled through the ballroom beside her old friend, hoping this was the turning point she'd been waiting for all evening. She'd run into one aggravation after another since the moment she arrived. The shawl she'd worn against the chilly spring night had caught on the door latch of the carriage and torn. Her stepmother had introduced her to two gentlemen whose acquaintance she had already previously made, but desperately wished she hadn't. She'd accepted a third gentleman's request for a dance, hoping to escape the first two, and nearly ended up face down on the floor. But then, Benedict Gray had caught her, and the evening began to show some promise. It had been months and months since they'd seen each other, and so much longer since they'd had a real conversation. Perhaps that could be remedied tonight. And there it was, the scene. Bruges was gripped by an intensity of this unfamiliar kind of recognition, for despite all his experience in the land of the gory, he'd never seen someone he actually knew reduced to a bloody heap like that, and he felt removed from the immediacy of it all, by the oddly calming effect of finally knowing, and at the same time upended and buffeted by the fatiginous end of not knowing, with all the myriad implications of the awful scene before him. But above all, he felt chastened by a realization which advanced to the fore of his rioting thoughts with a recriminatory flourish. I am way too high for this shit, without question mark. It was not until weeks later, when Mrs. Tufliximop delivered Galfus's company-issued computer to her husband's erstwhile employer, that the reason for his fatal existential crisis was discovered. One of the stars in the nearby system was destined to break free of its unnatural celestial menage and collide with the dusky middle-aged sun that held Rexus IV in orbit. Like a spurned lover, this rampaging ball of superheated hydrogen and helium would leave a swathe of destruction in its wake, incinerating most of the Rexan solar system and breaking up what had been an unremarkable but nevertheless stable relationship between Rexus IV and its own life-supporting star. In other words, the Rexons were doomed. Dude, did you get lost? Simon walked into the kitchen, an air of confusion on his face as he looked at me standing next to the sink. Are you doing dishes? You do know I have a dishwasher and a housekeeper, right? I'm not doing dishes. I shook my head and pressed my fingers to my lips as I nodded to the window above the double farmhouse sink in front of me. I was listening to Gemma and Stasia. Oh, are they going on about how great in bed I am? Simon grinned as I rolled my eyes. How would they both be going on about that? I raised a single eyebrow at my brother. Only Gemma would know that fact. True, he laughed. But I'm sure she would have bragged to Stasia about my prowess in the bedroom. And you don't understand why you don't have many women friends. I shook my head as we both burst out laughing. Simon walked over to the fridge, opened the door, and just stood there for a few seconds. Want a beer? He asked as he pulled out a bottle and held it in the air. 